Utah's red rock country has long been a draw for nature and landscape photographers. It's not just a place to go see, it's a place to be experienced. The variety of natural wonders is amazing, so it's understandable why Utah has some of the most amazing national parks. The photographic opportunities for landscape photographers is limitless, so it's no wonder this state draws so many to explore its most intimate details with their cameras. Long before photographers visited the area, the ancient Pueblo culture lived here building communities across the southwest. Their ruins are scattered over a vast region including some of the most popular sites like Mesa Verde and Chaco Canyon. While these sites are widely photographed, there are lesser known ruins that are just as exciting and possibly even more spectacular to photograph. So during a recent visit to the Cedar Mesa area of Utah, I decided to hike into Road Canyon and photograph Fallen Roof Ruin. This location has become pretty popular amongst photographers due to the spectacular features of the roof above the ruin and also its relatively easy access. It's located just south and slightly east of Natural Bridges National Monument. So to get there, take Highway 261 South, approximately 15 miles. Now some websites do say it's 13 miles, while others say it's 15 miles. So it's best you keep an eye out for Cigarette Springs Road turning east off of Highway 261 once you're at about mile 13. Once you're there, turn east on that road, drive about a mile where you'll find a place to sign in and pay an entrance fee, which at the time was about $2. It's here where I parked and prepared for my trip into Road Canyon. Okay, we have our camera gear in order. The GPS unit is programmed with the proper coordinates and we've thrown in a couple bottles of water. We're pretty well ready to hit the trail. It's about an hour after sunrise. The hike's about an hour and a half. That'll put us into the canyon near the ruin about mid-morning, which is perfect because the sun comes in, bounces light off all the canyon walls, and sort of fills in the darker part of the alcove where the ruin exists. It's about a mile and three quarters down in there and back and it's pretty well through the forest then you reach a section that's about 200 yards of switchbacks down to the bottom of the wash from there you're just going to follow the rock carns and the faint trails as well as everybody else's footprints so we're excited to get down there and get some photography going so we'll see you on the trail That is absolutely spectacular. Okay, I am here at Falling Roof Ruin and it is absolutely spectacular. We have the native ruins here, at least a thousand years old, I'm not really sure. And look at this ceiling, Falling Roof Ceiling. Absolutely spectacular. There's some type of stain on it as you can see. This will make for a great photograph. The other thing that's happening here that's kind of nice, and this is why they recommend that you come mid-morning, is because you're getting a lot of light bouncing off the rock out here and sending a very soft directional lighting into the alcove here containing the ruin. Even though it's very flat, it is still directional quality of light. And that's really what you want for something like this. Bright sun would just be too contrasty and wouldn't really work. So what I have on here is my 17 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. This allows me to incorporate the ceiling in the scene as well as the ruins and a little bit of the foreground makes for a nice composition. There's also some great verticals and some great horizontals. So we'll get those shots first then we're going to go ahead and move around and work the other angles and see what else we can come up with. So I'm going to get busy shooting.
What a spectacular location. We've got some great photography. And I think that pretty well wraps it up for our visit here to Falling Roof Ruin in Cedar Mesa area of Utah. We've got some great shots, horizontals and verticals from each side. So we're ready to take these images into the digital darkroom and we'll see you there. So I'm back in Bridge and I shot quite a few photographs but I've gone through and rated the ones I liked the best. I shot this angle which uh, really emphasizes the ceiling pretty good. I also shot a centered image and I kind of like this too. I really feel that this area up here is so powerful. Small ruins, large ceiling and you have to admit that's a very dramatic ceiling. I also came over and shot uh, so you can see out the other side the ruin more to the left, the ceiling as well. Not sure I really like that even though it does give a little bit of a view and I have darker exposures I could blend in as well. I came back and I also shot the ruins with less emphasis on the ceiling and I shot a normal uh, eye level angle but I also zoomed back a little bit as well and even got down a little bit lower. This one's a little overexposed but I got down and sort of shot up again a little bit. But I have to admit, when I go back and look through everything, I'm really drawn to the one from the side that shows a little bit of ruin, but really emphasizes the ceiling. And so this is the uh, another one of those angles here. But after really going through all of those, I decided this is the one I like the best. And so this is the one that I went ahead and processed. So I next opened the image in Photoshop. And if you're a Photoshop, Lightroom, Bridge user, you know for sure that there are a million ways to process images. And I'm just showing you one way. You might know a better way. You probably do. But this is how I like my workflow to go. And I could have done all this in Adobe Camera Raw. Sometimes I do. But this time I wanted some adjustment layers and some color correction in separate layers. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. So things that I noticed about the image is I love what's happening here. Clearly this is the center of attraction. This ceiling is so awesome. So I want to add a little bit of contrast. I want to force the white areas to be just a little bit wider. But down here there's a lot of contrast lacking. So I'm going to bump that up a little bit. And then another thing that I noticed, and I'm not sure why this happened, but this a real magenta gray cast down here. If you look right in this area the, the ruins is is pretty warm in tone reddish but it starts turning magenta down here and in these areas and I'm not really sure why geez it could be anything from dust blowing in that contains another type of a sediment or it could be the way the lights bouncing around I really don't know but I'm gonna fix it and I'll show you how I do it so first thing is I come in and I added a curves adjustment layer and if you look you can see just a bump in contrast a little darker on the shadow areas, a little brighter on the highlight areas. And then I also didn't want that applied to the upper areas. So I went in and added a mask with a brush at 100% opacity, painted black on there, and that pretty much denies the ceiling, that contrast adjustment that's down here. So look at the bottom again. You can see just a little snap added. And I kind of like that. So, okay, the next thing is I added another curves adjustment layer. And again, a similar curve here, a little darker on the shadows, not pushing up the lighter areas so much. And this is for the ceiling area. So take a look here as I toggle it on and off. You can see some snap. The color's even kind of saturating a little bit more just from the curves adjustment. And this mask, I painted out the uh, floor down there. I let a little bit of that contrast addition hit the ruin itself, but all of it by leaving this clear hitting the ceiling. And I think it worked pretty good. I like the result here. So we're not talking major adjustments on this image to get it, at least the way that I'm going to appreciate the image a little more. Then I added another empty layer, and I'll show you. You can barely see some red down here. So what I did is I went down to this image, I used the color picker tool. I came over here and I sampled this area right here because I want this area to be close to the same color. It won't be exact, but it'll be a little bit close. And what I did is I then set the brush to a low opacity of 30% and I go in and I paint over the area that I want to 
basically correct. So if you turn it on and off, you see that bluish magenta kind of giving way to a little bit more reddish in tone. And to me, that balances out a lot better. So finally, I debated about doing this, and I'm not sure. I, I'm going to save two versions, but I selected the crop tool, came down, kind of cropped out some of the foreground, and cropped it as an alternative to the full frame image. This is an 8 by 10 ratio, so I could make a print this way. So the cropping gives a little bit more emphasis on the sky. Because I saved a non-cropped and a cropped version, I can go back and certainly use one over the other. So I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly recommend going and visiting Fallen Roof Ruin in the Cedar Mesa area of Utah. If you make it down there, good luck with your photographic adventures. So just go shoot. <laughs>